Hi, is this you? Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Every day is so wonderful and suddenly it's hard to breathe. Now and then I get insecure from all the pain. I'm so ashamed <laughs> <laughs> And I am beautiful No matter what they say No one's carrying me down And I am beautiful In every single way Words can bring me down oh. So don't you bring me down Hey guys, Napoleon here. Let's hope that that wasn't you, by the way. It's agreed by much of the Dead by Daylight community that the Knight is possibly the worst killer in the game. Not even possibly, he is the worst killer in the game. Numerous Reddit posts, forum posts, entire YouTube videos complaining about how bad he is and his issues. Even the DLC chapter on Steam is getting a mostly negative score. It's without a fact that his power is inconsistent and rarely works as intended. However, there are absolutely certain scenarios where his power is more than useful and gives you an edge over most survivors and even most killers. First, I'm going to explain his power and honestly the problems with it. The Knight's power allows, create, uh, allows players to create patrol paths for their three AI-controlled guards to travel. Guards are summoned one by one in an unchanging cylindrical rotation, with each one possessing a unique speciality. Once summoned, they will spot and chase down any nearby survivors in their radius, alerting you to their presence. While creating a patrol path, you could command them to destroy, to destroy breakable walls, pallets, or damage generators. Once they finish their assignment, they will depart and your power will recharge. Going under the guards, the Carnifex is the first, recognizable because he's fat and he has a big sword. He specializes in quickly damaging generators and breaking pallets and breakable walls. It's worth noting that when he locks down a survivor, he does spend the most time in chase with them. There's basically two timers to the, to the guards. One is their patrol time, which is the amount of time that they will follow their path, assuming that they don't spot a survivor, in which case they enter the chase timer, which you can see with the survivor's icon on the left of the screen. As the chase goes on, the, the circle, it, it, it's like a clock, it goes clockwise and it eventually runs out. That's the guard's chase timer. The Carnifex does have the largest chase timer, so use that to your advantage, or take that as you will. The Assassin is the second recognizable because he has a jagged dagger. He specializes in the hunt, moving faster than his compatriots while patrolling. However, he has a rather short chase time upon so spotting a survivor and a small uh, radius to notice survivors. The Jailer is the third recognizable for the jagged helmet plate armor, and his flail. This guard is the most thorough, spending the longest time on patrol and having the largest radius in which to spot survivors. Before I can tell you how to actually use his power, it, it's, it's important to face the fact you should not be using his power every second. It's not like other killers' power because there's so much counterplay around the guards and their patrol, you just hold W, go in a direction, and the guards can't find you and the killers lost you. Instead, you should be using his power as a roadblock on certain jungle gyms to either kill the loop entirely or navigate them to a more preferable area of the map. For example, Shack with the pallet down. That would be a great area to steer survivors for. You could really use it. You should really use it more as a. The big mistake with the knight is that people are using his power as its own thing already, depending on it. When you should really be using it as more of a tool, just in case it doesn't work. It's just a tool, kind of like a ladder. You should be using it as a ladder or a tool. This is not a power that you're going to heavily depend on. It's just, if, if it's there, it's there, you use it. Same thing with, you know, Billy's Chainsaw. If this sounds confusing, don't worry. I'll be explaining this in detail for certain, for certain loops and structures. Also, while giving tips to spot good jungle gems to use your power. Now, the main counter, as I said before, that prevents people from using his power is the fact that it takes a couple seconds to activate, to activate his power. You get, there's a sound cue, and it takes a solid... 10 seconds to use his power, assuming that you use the full duration of their patrol path. In which case, the survivor hears the sound cue and sees you put down your sword, they run away and they go in a complete opposite direction, and it's, it, it sucks. You lose bloodlust because you lost the chase, and the survivor escapes without getting it, and the survivor escapes in one health state. Holding W is the strongest knight counter with practically no counterplay. It's absolutely worth noting that the knight is inevitably going to receive a buff, so I, I do think that it's better to learn how he works in anticipation for that inevitable buff. 
under which loops you should not use this power on. It's so easy. It, you, you, it's so easy to outplay him on most notable structures like T and L wall, shack, and most common jungle gym variations where the survivor has many directions to run in once they hear you use your power. Now the big secrets to the knight's power is to use it on pallets where there are not many directions to go enabling you to block off strong roots and secure a hit slash down. I'm going to use a pretty strong example of this. Look at the corner pallet on dead dog. This is a nightmare for most for most killers. Wraith, Pinhead, Nemesis, everyone struggles. Every killer struggles on this. It's a very strong loop, especially if you're going against some good survivors that know how to play it. And there's even a jungle gym on the side. So once they hit you with the pallet stun, if, if, if you even get that far, they just go off to a jungle gym, hit the first vault, and bam, you're done. But it's completely different with Knight because he ignores strong loops like this. It's, you are guaranteed to get a hit with this if a survivor is standing there. First, let me bring up the aerial view. Look at that. They're a pretty disgusting piece of work there. Now, I want you to count with me how many escape routes the survivor has if they're looping it. Count with, count with me. One, two, three. I think you know where this is going. Put yourself right in front of the pallet at two. Use the guard. Quickly go to, quickly go to three. And then back to one. Very simple stuff. And now you've corralled the survivor. You've steered them away from the loop into a dead zone in which you could, one, either down them or two, get the hit, all without even dropping the pallet. Give yourself a pat on the back. You just did so you just did something in what? Five seconds? That would have taken most killers 30 seconds. Little tricks with the knight are, are very hard, are sorry, very sparse, but they work, and it's a real time saver. Sorry, time saver when you can use this power effectively. Here's a video of me and here's a video of my friend and I demonstrating it. Shout out to Chicken, he's a big help. Now I can. No shit, no crazy, no kizzy. Ah. Yeah. I'll give you another loop that this trick sort of works on, the infamous staircase into a window. I'm pretty sure this is also on Larry's, so experiment a little bit. Pretty much guaranteed to waste the killer's time for a minimal gain if they know what they're doing. It's very simple. Now, we're going to do the same thing as before. Take the overhead view, take a look. How many escape routes once they go up that staircase? How many escape routes? One, two. This is even easier. You send your guard to the bottom of the loop. And then you go up the stairs. You either catch them on the way down, or you go up, hit the M1. They vault or something. I don't know. And then they get hit by the guard. Little little jungle gyms like those are where you should use your power. It is incredibly easy to secure a hit or even a down when you use this power like this. You should not be running it and you should not be running it in chase. You should be running it very sparingly on certain jungle gyms. Believe me, it, it is not. It, it is a terrible power, but it works. Now, why do these texts work and when should you use them? Now, this, the simplest way of telling you this is you should really use it when you can identify what directions the survivor has of escaping. You know, if they have a billion different directions to run into, you, 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 sh you shouldn't use this power. That should just be right off the bat. You should not use it. However, if you're in a jungle gym where there's three, two, two directions to go into and you're locking down two of them, send the guard out to one. And then you could corral the survivor and just quickly find out what, and you could just quickly get the survivor hit, hit him or something i don't know <clears throat> you should not use his power on loops of jungle gyms with a lot of escape options you will lose bloodlust and increase distance between the survivor and yourself but a little known trick is that you can actually use him in reverse you should not be immediately sending your guards to where the survivor is because by the time the guard extends the terror the sorry not terror radius when they extend their detection radius the survivor is going to be long gone and you're going to be even further away you should put the guard where the survivor is going to be you see what i'm so let's say they're running to shack and you you know shack pallets up it hasn't been dropped you should send your guard to shack and now if the survivor goes to shack they get hit with the guard but if they go back they get hit with you force him force them out of their comfort zone don't let them get to where they want to go that is how you use the night i hope you guys enjoyed the video maybe even learn something from it see you guys next time love you